I think there is a theme in the in the house today that God is speaking a, a particular word to us. And uh, I, I just want to jump into what God has already been declaring to us as we've been in the presence of the Lord today. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. I'm conserving my voice, but uh, if I could sing, I'd sing, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. I'm so glad I learned to trust him. Jesus, save your precious friend. And I know that he is with me, and he'll be with me to the end. Psalms 37, I want verse 3. Verse 3 says, trust in the Lord. That's enough. Trust in the Lord. Psalms 37 is a wisdom psalm of David. Some believe that these series of observations represent David's instructions to Solomon as he's grooming Solomon to take his place as king. And as the Psalter is compiled by the, by the scribes, these wisdom sayings are arranged into an acrostic so that they would be easily remembered. Every This chapter, every two verses, you go to the next letter. Um, David, in this psalm, um, I'm a virtual sanctuary, they're kind of filling me over like they don't know me, so y'all just say amen in the comments. David includes two autobiographical, autobiographical statements in Psalms 37. And when taken together, they help us get our arms around what David wants to say in this psalm. We'll look at the second and then the first. You got your Bible open, verse number 35. David says, I've seen a wicked violent man spreading himself like a luxuriant tree in the native soil. I like King James. It says like a green bay tree. Then he says, then he passed away and lo, he was no more. I sought for him, but he could not be found. Second autobiographical Graphical statement, verse number 25. He says, I have been young, and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. It's designed to kind of speak to us. What is David saying? That, that the Lord takes care of those who trust in him. I know it took me a minute to get there, but I, I got there. I said that the Lord knows how to take care of you if you keep trusting in him. If you put your faith in him, he'll be faithful to you. I need a witness in the room somewhere that knows that God is faithful to the faithful. He says, if you just keep on trusting me, I'll demonstrate my faithfulness to you. And you'll look for the wicked man and you will soon discover that though he be wicked and though he prosper and it looks like it's working out for him, it's only for a little while. But if you just hang in there with the Lord, he'll make sure all your needs are met. 
that the Lord knows how to put food on your table when you're hungry, how to keep clothes on your back, how to keep a roof over your head, how to make people leave you alone. I'm trying to get you to see if you just trust him, he'll take care of you. If you trust him, He'll take, and, and, and I got to add this little piece on here, Deke, in his own time. I, I got I to put that on there. He'll take care of you, but he's only going to do it in his own time. You can't hurry, God. No, you just got to wait. You got to trust him and give him time no matter how long it takes because he's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be there. You don't have to work. He may not come when you want him. But he'll always be. Um, now, I understand. I understand. I understand why some of y'all can't say amen to this. I understand. The reason why some of y'all can't say amen to this is because the only way you get this kind of talk, you have to already be mature. This is what you call strong meat. This ain't no Similac. This ain't no Infamil. This here is a strong steak porterhouse, uh, uh, depending on how you like it cooked. It, it, it's a strong meat. You, you got to be mature to talk like this. Because it requires you not to take the short view, but the long view. It requires you to say, if I have to delay gratification today so that I can be fulfilled long term, I'll let you say what you need to say today and I'll hold my mouth until the Lord fights my battle. If, if, I got, if I got to live on a budget today so I can go on the trip tomorrow, let me budget my coins now so I have what I need when I need. This is for the mature. And, uh, uh, okay, let me see if I can. They, they, they fine with me today. Let me see how if I can get them here. How do I take the long view, Pastor? Uh, you have to weigh what you're going through by three things. One, you need to weigh what you're going through by who God is. See, my, I'm not I'm not worried about my situation today because I know who God is. God has been faithful all my life. God has been good all my life. God has came and got me out of trouble all my life. God has loved me with an everlasting love from before my father met my mother or his mother met his father or her mother met her mother. I'm trying to get you to see that God is God even though my situation may not look like it or feel like it. God is still God. And because God is still God, my situation does not change how I see my God. That's one. Two, I got to weigh my situation against what God has said about my future. See, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. And they're thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts to bring you a future of hope and expecting. If it ain't where God said I'm going to be, it can't be the end of the story. I know it may feel like your back is up against the wall, but if he said you're going to be the head and not the tail, it cannot end with your back up against the wall. I know it may look like you're broke today, but if he said you're going to be the lender and not the borrower, it can't end where you are today. I know you got a bad report from the doctor, but if he said he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace was upon and with his strength we're here. I can't leave here until he touched my body. I know what it looks like, but what it looks like is a lie. The only thing that is true is what God said. I need to question my situation. I'm almost, I'm almost finished because y'all don't like this sermon. Uh, who God is. What God has said about my future. But then I got to weigh my situation against what God has done in my past. 
Now, I'm going to tell a piece of my testimony right here, and if it just so happened to be your testimony too, this is where you say amen or wave your hand or, or blink or something. This is not my first time being low on funds. I've been low on funds before, and he paid my bills. Uh, this ain't my first time being sick. No, 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 no. I've been sick before. I was sick before. And, and, and you know what? He healed my body last time. This ain't the first time somebody couldn't stand me. People couldn't stand me for a long time. And he, and he brought me through that then. And he's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He'll be the same tomorrow. And if he did it before, I'm standing here today as a witness and a testimony that if God has f brought me through before, if God has fought my battle before, God will fight my battle again. All I have to do is trust him. I understand, I understand why we're struggling with this. I had to say this in my church when I preached this there. That, that our default setting is typically to let the problem win. We're more inclined to live in the negative. That's why he starts the psalm the way he does. He says, don't fret yourself because of the evildoer. Why? Because it's easier to be mad than to trust God. Nor be envious of the worker of iniquity because it's easier to be envious and jealous than it is to trust God. But he says, I need you to be mature in your faith and rise above the right now to not look at the things that are seen, but to fix your eyes on the things that are not seen and put your trust in a God that can bring you through what you're going through if you just trust him. Oh. Uh, uh. Let, let, let me tell you. Y'all interested? Y'all interested? Um, he says, he, he, let, let bring closer, bring closer, sitting on the road next to you. He says, uh, I don't want you to let what you're going through get you worked up. Mm. He, he, he says, I, I, I don't want you to let what you're going through cause a fire in your bosom that you can't control. The question is, how do I not blow my top? When I'm at my job and they talking that kind of talk, how do I hold my tongue? How, how, how do I how, how do I maintain my confidence when the doctor's report says something different? How, how do I how do how do I how do I hold on to the rope? How do I hold on when my relationship is on the rocks? Okay, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. You ain't got a bed. You ain't got a bed. I'll tell you. The theme of the song is that you have to trust in the Lord. And he keeps finding different ways to say the same thing. You need to see it. Okay. Verse number three, trust in the Lord. Verse number four, delight yourself in the Lord. Verse number five, trust also in him. Verse number seven, rest in the Lord. Verse number 34, wait for the Lord. He keeps telling you the way you make it is you got to learn how to trust. I, 
I see it on your face, because y'all look like Greater Bueller look when I start talking this kind of talk. Because now you want to know what does it mean to trust in the Lord? If you get this sentence, this sentence I'm finna say, you get everything I got to give you today. You ain't got to get nothing else I say as long as you get this sentence right here. Trusting in the Lord means allowing the Lord to lead you into progressively relying on his ability to take care of you. Say it another way. Say it another way. Trusting in the Lord is letting God teach you how to trust him even more. Because if you ever learn to trust him today, you'll trust him a little bit more tomorrow. So it's a progressive relying on God. He said, you got to let God teach you how to rely on him. Okay, 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 okay. Um, um, here it is, here it is, here it is. Uh, Hebrew word, Hebrew word. The, the Hebrew language doesn't have vowels. Doesn't have vowels. So when they spell out words, they only use consonants. So Hebrew word for trust is B T H. B T H. This is the Hebrew word for trust. Um, several word pictures. Uh, soldier. Leaning. I'm waiting on y'all to catch what I'm saying. Now listen to me. The soldier leans on his spear. Um, chivalry ain't dead. The women are coming down from the crowd law. So, so, so one of the brothers go and extend their arm and while they're stepping down, they leave. I'm trying to find one that'll work. Uh, maybe, maybe not the picture, maybe the definition. It means to lie extended As in to put one's full weight on. Oh. You came in church today and you walked down the aisle and you picked that chair, that pew, and you slid down to the place where you chose and you didn't, you didn't check under the pew. To make sure that the screws were still good, you didn't check that. You didn't check that. You, you, but 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 you 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 didn't just sit down. You fell down. Your feet came up off the ground. You fell down. You fell down so heavy. Your feet because you believed that that pew could hold your weight. That's what it means. I'm in this room by myself. That's what it means to put your trust in the Lord. It means that you completely put all your weight on him because you believe that he is able to hold you up. That's why Peter says, cast all your cares on him. See, this word cast in the text is not to place it down gently. It's literally to hurl. It's almost like throwing a football or a baseball. He says, throw all of that on the Lord because he cares for you. He's strong enough to hold up all your weight. Oh, Deke, that didn't work for him. I got to try it again. So, um, 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 <laughs> this is going to be good. This, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. You're going to like this one. To heighten the intensity of the word is not just lying, extended, 
on the ground, putting your whole weight on it. It's going to be so good. It means to lay face down. <laughs> it means to lay Extending on. So not only am I putting my whole weight on him, I can't even see what's going on around me. <laughs> it don't even matter what the situation is because I done already put my weight on him. And see, somebody came up and see you see shift this morning worried about your situation. And God had me preach this message to you to tell you if you really put your faith in him, if you really trust in him, it don't matter what the situation is. It don't matter what it is. No matter how rocky the relationship, it doesn't matter how hard the case loaded, it doesn't matter how low the money is, it doesn't matter how far gone your health is, if you really trust him, you'll put your face down so you can't see nothing but him. I'm going to show you how much I trust him. Parallel passage, parallel passage, parallel passage. Parallel passage. They not liking this sermon so, social media. Y'all gonna have to help me in the in the comments. Y'all give me a heart or a like or something. Let me know I ain't by myself. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh, parallel passage. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Wait, 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 wait. You mean to tell me that Solomon put the definition in the words? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and do not. To your own understanding. But in all your ways. Acknowledge him. And, and King James says. He'll direct your path. But a clearer translation is. He'll make your path straight. If you take your eyes. Off the path. And put your eyes on the Lord. The Lord knows how to bring down the thing that's too high. And bring up the thing that's too low. And move every obstacle out the way. And strain the path out. But you got to lay on him first. You got to lay on him first. Um, uh, um, th th there's another implication here. Hebrew word, BTH, no vowels, BTH. Um, th th there's another implication here. It can also mean to lead a person to trust. Rewind that tape back. Hebrew word, BTH, no vowels, can also mean to lead you to trust. In the New Testament, it's the word to persuade. All right, let me let, let me see here. Um, see, 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 see. The, this suggests that you don't just come to trust God automatically. It's like a woman been in a bad relationship. You know, a woman been in a bad relationship. Dude dogged out, did her wrong, and now she in a relationship with you. And she got PTSD. <sighs> yeah, she got PTSD from the last relationship. It, it, every time, every time you grab your bag to go to work, she's scared you gone for real. Like, ah, uh, you know, and and, and 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 you know, you know, you know how it is. And go on and leave. Go on, you ain't gotta stay. You go, you know, that, that, that. See, 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 you that girl that was dogged out in the relationship. Because you done been through enough stuff in your life to have traumatized you. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I understand. You don't want to tell the truth. But you've had enough no's in your life to make you afraid of them. You, you've gone through enough struggle and strain and trial and trouble and tribulation that you've been scarred. And so the Lord knows that you ain't going to just open up and trust me. So he says, I'll put you in a situation that will open you up a little bit. 
<laughs> well, you just trust me a little bit. You ain't got to trust me for a big thing. You just learn to trust me for a small thing. And once you trust me for a small thing, I'll put you in a medium-sized thing. And, and, and you'll learn to trust me for the medium side. And, and, and after I bring you through the medium side, I'll bring you in a large trial. So you learn to trust me with the large. And then I'll put you in an extra large and a 2X and a 3X and a 4X into a deluxe until you just say, I trust the Lord for everything because he's leading you. Um, he, he's been leading you um, to trust. Uh, um, the, the James Montgomery Boyce says that, that trust in God is made up of three elements. If I get through this, I'll leave y'all alone. I, I'll stop boring y'all to death. I apologize. Uh, he says there are, there are three elements, three elements to trusting in God. They describe how God persuades us to trust him. First element is the content of trust. Um, he, he, James Montgomery Boy says that God, <laughs> I love this, God makes himself unmistakably known in your situation. Uh, here, here's what it means that God will let it get so bad that can't nobody fix it but him now I was I thought I could at least get one amen on that that you'd have been in a problem that got so bad that could nobody fix it but God and God will sit back and let that thing go down and go down and go down and worse gets worse and worse turns into worse and, 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 it, and the Lord he'll make it so that can't nobody fix it so when he steps in you gotta say can't nobody do this but the Lord they don't believe me. So let, let me let me give you a Bible illustration. Bible illustration. Uh, Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. Uh, and and Jairus' daughter is sick. She's sick. Did you hear what I said? She's sick. But then the woman with the issue of blood interrupts Jesus. She crawling through the crowd, touching him, folks, him, pulling on folk clothes, and to stop the whole procession. We trying to get to my sick daughter, and Jesus finishes healing the woman with the issue of blood, and then the messenger from Jairus's house says, "She ain't sick no more. She's dead." Jesus allowed it to get so bad that when he gets to the house, he gets glory because he does what can't nobody else do. He does. Well, okay, she, she had just died. Okay, Lazarus, your friend is sick. Jesus sits for a few more days until Lazarus is dead. Not just dead, but dead for four days. And he says, move the stone and says, Lazarus comes forth because he does what can't nobody else do. And I don't know if you've ever been there in your life, but I've been in situations where it couldn't nobody do it but the Lord. Come on. All right. We ain't, I ain't seen y'all in a while. Let, 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 let me tell you, let me tell you how God unmistakably showed up in a situation in my life. Pops, Pops knows this. Pop knows this. Uh, in 2022, I went to uh, my routine doctor's visit. Coming up on my 34th birthday, going to routine doctor. He says, I'm going to put you on some medicine, but it'll make your heart flood. Okay, doc. He said, I want to take an EKG. Took one EKG. No, we're going to take two EKGs. Two EKGs turned into three EKGs. Three EKGs turned into go to the cardiologist. Yeah. Cardiology says you have a RBBB, right bundle branch blockage. Say it in English, the right side of my heart had stopped working. <laughs> 
The muscle of my heart was getting hard. My pulse had slowed. My heart rate had slowed. And, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, Doc, what can we do? And he says, all we can do is wait for you to have a heart attack. We can't have no surgery. There's no therapy. There's no procedure. There's no medicine. Okay, Doc. And so I kept on preaching. I ain't stopped preaching. I preached everywhere, fulfilled all my engagements. And I went back in October. A, a sickness that can't be helped. All we can do is wait for a heart attack. I went on preaching and the Lord moved the blockage. I went in October of last year. No blockage. Wait, wait, wait. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you why you should shout. Because I went to the doctor on Thursday. And doctor on Thursday said, well, it still ain't there. I said, well, thank you. And got my bag, got my baby, and I left. Because God makes himself unmistakably known in the situations of your life. I can't say a doctor did it. I can't say a medicine did it. I can't say therapy did it. God did it. And I just want to know if there's anybody other than me that got a God did it. Sit, 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 sit. Here's number two. Here's number two. The content of trust. The content of trust. I was looking for you, bud. Content of trust. Consent of trust. The consent of trust is you have to admit that God showed up in the situation and he worked it out for your good. God worked it out. Here's the third. I'm, I'm, I'm out of time. I, I want to stop. Uh, the confidence of the trust. Here's the thing. After I got finished with that doctor's appointment in October, I went and sat down in my car. This is the this is the confidence that comes from trusting God. I went and sat down in my car, and uh, you know you try to be strong, but I, I, I was strong in the doctor's office. I was good. I was good on the elevator. I was good walking through the lobby. But as soon as I shut that car door, tears started falling because that man told me that I was going to live with this for the rest of my life. He said, the only way, the only way we're going to treat this is if you have a heart attack. And, and I, I was sitting in the car crying. And, and you want to know what? The Lord, the Lord talk a little hard to me sometimes. He said, boy, what you crying for? Yeah. Well, well, he just said, I didn't have a, said, but, but, but didn't you know that I'm always going to show up for you? hear what I said God said to me sitting in my car in the parking lot of St. Francis Hospital behind the Butler Pavilion he said I'm always going to show up for you y'all still hear him talking to me I'm talking to you God sent me to tell you that I will always I don't care what the situation is I will always How do you know he's always going to show up? Because I have history with God. And my history with God says he always shows up. Here it is. Last thing. Most commentaries consider this Old Testament word trust to be synonymous with the New Testament word faith but the more accurate New Testament synonym is hope uh, uh, hope is hope is Hope, hope is looking forward with a confident expectation of a good result coming in the future. Uh, see, trusting in the Lord equals hope because it says that I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. But if I know anything, I know there's one thing that he's going to do it. Oh, 
I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I heard Reggie Sharp tell this illustration. I, I, I want to see if I can't find C Sharp and, and uh, finish with this. Reggie Sharp said that, that the preacher, yeah, I want to hear C Sharp. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Reggie Sharp says that the daddy was in the office preparing sermon notes and he heard noise in the living room. Daddy came, came around to find out what the noise was. Son's in the living room. Boy, what in the world is you jumping for? That was a ice cream truck. Ice cream truck. Daddy looked out the window. over there one no ice cream truck boy what is you jumping for ice cream truck ice cream truck boy ain't no ice cream truck out there but that little boy said daddy I know you can't see it, but I hear the music. And uh, because I hear the music, I know that it's not far away. And uh, I, 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 I came to say to Christians United, ice cream truck. Ice cream truck. I know you may not see it, but it's on the way. All you got to do is keep on trusting, keep on leaning, keep on depending, because sooner or later it's going to turn in your favor. God's going to turn it around just for you. Now, I, I, I need me a witness that can help me close my little sermon that knows that hope makes not a shame. It simply means that God won't let your expectations go without an answer. And I don't know oh, what you're waiting on. I said, I don't know oh, what you're waiting on. I don't know oh, what you've been praying about. But God oh, won't let all your prayers go unanswered. So can I go old school? It's Dr. High's birthday. Can I go old school? Used to hear him sing, hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes, hope things eternal, and hope, wait, hope y'all won't help. I said hope to his hand. I'm trying to find somebody that got a good expectation that's been waiting on the Lord to show up in your life I got a good word for you faith that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they'll mount up with wings like eagles they'll run and won't get weary they'll walk and they won't faint I just came to tell you keep on trusting Woo!
Keep on trusting. Woo! Keep on trusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Reverend High's birthday. Can I act like a Baptist preacher? He laid down in a bar of gray, had to wait all night Friday, had to wait all day Saturday, had to wait all night Saturday night. But if you keep on waiting, Early, I said early, 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 Sunday morning, waiting will soon be over, up from the grave, he rose with a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose the victor of the dark domain and he lives forever with the sanctuary. He rose. He rose. He rose. Yeah, he rose. And since he rose, now unto him that's able to do exceeding and abundant above all that we ask and or think according to the power at work in you. You ought to find somebody and tell them he's able. Come on, find somebody and say he's able. You ought to go find somebody else. You, I'm deputizing you to preach. Turn your preacher voice on and say he's able. He's able. What is he able to do? Able to keep you from falling. Present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. Yeah! Ah! Ah! Yeah! Ah! Yeah! Woo, I feel all right. Ah! Ah! All right, I need one witness. Okay, they told me I couldn't stop preaching, so I need you to help me. Why don't you get you a neighbor, grab them by the hand. I don't want you to tell them nothing, but if what I say fits how you feel, I want you to squeeze that hand. I said, if the Lord made a way out of no way, squeeze their hand if the Lord ever touch your body squeeze that hand if the Lord save your soul squeeze that hand if the Lord turn your situation around squeeze that hand now you ought to help me look them in the face and tell them you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. And since you can't pray them, let me pray them. Let everything. Ah, woo, let everything. Let everything that has breath, pray them. Pray them. Come on, help me. Pray them. Clap your hands. Lift your voice. Pray them. He's worthy. Worthy. anybody in this
this place that got just an inkling of trust in the Lord. You are not mind throwing your hands up and say, God, trust them. Do I have any trusters in this place? Do I have any real believers in this house? Lean over to another neighbor and say, neighbor, I trust them. I trust them in the morning. I trust them in the noonday. I trust them at night. I trust them in the good times. I trust them in the bad times. Will you trust them? Will you trust them? Will you trust them? Say yeah. Oh, he will. No, ah, he will. Ah, no, 